Hey sales team, I'm going to send you this video real quick, give you a couple more tips on how to be more successful on your sales calls. What you're going to find is that we're going to focus on the dealer's business mindset. Now it's important to keep in mind that the words you use have all the power and will give you all the control. So check this out. Welcome sales team to our first little video chat. Our topic today is, are you challenging your customers in today's new normal environment? We've been talking a lot about what the marketplace is demanding, that of being an expert and not just some consultant. And we've also talked about not being Debbie the Time Life Operator, which means just pitching products and letting the first no derail your sales call. In the email you received, which included this link to this video, there's also a link to Challenge to Win. I encourage you to check it out. That's Sam O'Rear's TIGI Next Offering. And it's kind of right on target where we're heading. So I'm going to try to do this in one take. In fact, I have to because there's no time like the present. So let's get started. So I want to start with an observation. Are you really tackling your sales calls with a determined fervor? Do you feel passionate about your mission, driven to help dealers get to profitability faster? You have to ask these questions because if they're not answered and the answer isn't yes, you're certainly heading uphill towards a battle that you most likely won't win. Do you hear yourself asking better, tougher, more disruptive questions that challenge the dealer's current state of mind? Or are you just doing what you've always been doing? And I say that because that's what I'm hearing. I'm not seeing that drive to help the dealers get to profitability, that desire to understand the dealer's business mindset. And I hear people just doing what they've always been doing, which means that you're struggling. You need extra resources, some different ideas, some tips. And that's what this is all about. If you want to have more fun and make a whole lot more sales and a bunch more money, then you're going to have to learn how to change the game. And that's a mindset. That's a mind shift that you have to take. And that's what we're going to talk about. Simply stop pitching product. I mean, stop talking so much. And start asking questions about their business mindset. Just listen around the room and you can see people talking, talking, talking. And you never hear them stop long enough to even listen and hear what the dealer is trying to tell them. So consider this. What if you were to say, what we're interested in, Mr. Dealer, is balancing your mission with your operations and your financial success measures. Pause. One, two, three. You see, the dealer is trying to figure out how to increase the income and profits. You know, what sorts of things can they adjust or do differently? Where can he make some changes? B. Mr. Dealer, what's your mission? What do you want to do here? Either you're a multi-rooftop business as a mini group or you're an individual dealer. Pause again. One, two, three. See, the dealers definitely have a vision. They have a vision for their business. Along with it, he has a mission to accomplish, to achieve his vision. Did you catch that? The dealers definitely have a vision for their business, and along with it, they have a mission. So you need to figure out what it is. And what business owner, it's their baby, wouldn't want to talk about it. Actionable, measurable, and with timing. What do you want to do? The first hurt always lies between the goal and where he stands now. So what's the circumstances, the current situation that the dealer's in? So here's some questions to ask. Where are you now? What do you need to get to get there. What do you need as far as processes? What about tools and technology? 
Let's talk about what you need talent-wise. You see, the dealer is always evaluating his or her needs, and they need help in evaluating this, what they have in order to accomplish their mission in terms of the people and the talent, the tools and technology and the process. And that's like five things that you can start talking about to show that you have a little understanding of their business and that you have credibility, right? So let's do a cough test. Oh my gosh, how cool would that be if you were to ask a dealer or make that statement? Cough test, they might say. Yes, it's core utility. It's your mission. Your balance of operations, people, processes, and technology to your mission. Then you right-size your expectations as far as your financial performance is concerned. Your success measures. Right? Sounds like makes sense to me. Usually dealers will take their operations, you know, and set up that operational setup, and then they back into their mission. You know, it's the old, well, it's what we have, and it's what we can sell. So it's a really ugly way to do business. But if we were up front as sales reps saying, hey, let's do a cough test. Let's. So let's talk about it. Do you know what to talk about? Do you know how to talk about it? Do you know how to do the groundwork in order to make your points clear so they stick? Do you know how to assume the conclusion to the sale and get it and get it today? So you have to think of some key words here that are going to help you when the dealer responds to you and you start having a dialogue not a monologue but a dialogue because you've asked some pretty crazy stuff about this thing called cough so check this out what if you use a phrase like sounds like sounds like implies that you're listening sounds like implies that you heard what's going on sounds like assumes an action is needed sounds like is kind of a recap of what you heard so all those things together give you some more power gives you credibility as that expert and here's another statement now if you make a statement it helps establish you as experts establishes your credibility and it breaks that patterned way of thinking so when you say let's do a cough test that's what's going on and speaking of let's let's is a huge power and control word you want to use it with authority use it with strength and use it with courage let's is a wonderful wonderful way to be assumptive you know it's all about the dealers business mindset Take a look at the graph that I've created and that we've talked about. You don't want to propose any idea, pitch a product, talk about a solution without knowing what the dealer's thinking about and what he's going through. Looking at the graph, the mindset simply says it suggests that the dealer is thinking about profit. So you have to be thinking what's on the back of the dealer's forehead. It's about revenue, simply money coming in. So it's that income statement. And if you think of a calendar, just like you do, you have 10 days left in this month before you either break even, which is hitting quota, or you're profitable, which is overachieving quota. Does that make sense? Revenue to overhead. What's overhead? Oh my gosh, it's all the things that are costing the dealer which are preventing him from being profitable. So you have to outrun that, and our products do that. So don't forget, the business mindset isn't just about sales, which is new car sales, used car sales, and F&I, but it's also about the parts, service, and body department. Each one of those departments or profit centers have that same challenge. How do I work with this income? How do I get more income? Where's the revenue going to come from? 
when am I going to get enough of it in to break even and eventually start being profitable? Presenting the solution. My product allows your operations to be more effective, to sell more at a lower cost. Can you say that? Can you repeat that? Can you memorize that? Please. Everything we're talking about, use these words. Use this language. My product allows your operations. What are operations again? People, talent, tools, technology, and processes. Remember those six things? Anchor them into your mind because that's the dealer's operations. And our solution, all of them by the way, advertising, helps them be more effective. They can sell more at a lower cost. It's like there's two things going on. My product props up your talent. It props up your lack of processes. It props up your lack of tools to accomplish the mission. Did you catch that? It goes right with the first thing we just talked about. Item A. My product allows your operations to be more effective. How? By propping up your lack of talent. By propping up your lack of processes and propping up your lack of tools. Just because you don't have all your operations in order, that doesn't mean don't do anything. You still have a mission to accomplish. What are you going to do to be more effective? To help better achieve that in the least amount of expense and in the most efficient way. Item C. You want to accomplish higher revenues and lower cost for profitability. My product does that. It goes back to the chart again. If you're looking at the business mindset chart, revenue, 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 revenue. Lowers the cost of doing business, cost of goods sold, cost of uh, basically taking out of that overhead bucket, advertising expense. We have all the proof statements in the world to show how very affordable, inexpensive, and highly profitable, huge returns with our advertising. Digital advertising is definitely the way to go. We have proof statements to show that everybody's online shopping, researching, and doing business primarily online. Our products help the dealers do that. How cool is that? So do not propose any idea or product or solution until you know about what the dealer's thinking. And if he won't open up, then you tell him. Tell him what you know based on your experience. Remember, you're the expert. Remember this too, to assume the sale by using the agreement discussed last week. And here it is. Mr. Dealer, let's just do an experiment. Let's just spend three grand a month to begin with, okay? Let's look at the first, and then just after that, you and I can get together and we'll have an agreement. Let's look at that for now. And how long you want to look at it? Oh, 90 days? Let's look at it for 90 days. And then in 90 days, let's double it. Because you're going to have some idea of what the impact is. I'm not going to overwhelm you with three grand a month. That, it's just a test. Let's just call it a pilot. Okay, let's just do that. But here's the agreement. If we increase sales by what? Two, three percent? Yeah, two, three percent. I don't know about, let's say three percent, okay? If we can increase sales to three percent, you can handle that, right? Okay, then we'll increase sales three percent or more, and then you can agree to either make a decision to add more people or you can just stay at three grand for the rest of the year. Before I conclude, team, please don't stop at the first no. Did you know that it takes 45 yeses to get a sale on average? That means all the way from the very beginning where you say, sure is a nice day, isn't it? Just get the head nodding. Be assumptive. Use let's. 
and I don't know let me back up real quick but did you catch that right here either or either you agree to make a decision to add more people or you just stay at three grand for the rest of the year either way you win all right there you have it practice drill and rehearse those scripts until they're ingrained in your head those words everything those words mean everything in sales so give it a go stretch yourself step out of your bounds change and watch your conversations take flight all right we'll see you next time Thank you.